Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about dealing with your training, your recovery, your performance, all of these things as we age. So uh, let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing, work on skill at my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. And this is something that, you know, we have to be honest with ourselves about. Um, and it's hilarious because you're going to see the younger kids come in who, who maybe they don't like me, they don't like what I have to say, they're going to say, oh, he's just making excuses and... Um, all of my older guys lifting, this is stuff that we are having to learn. And this is something you younger guys are going to have to deal with one day. Um, let's get a little dose of reality. Uh, things do change as you get older. Your recovery changes. Your strength will change. You are going to find at a certain threshold, even if you start using stuff, you go on that there cell tech, that uh, it's not going to work the way that you think it is as you get older. Uh, recovery matters and like for me I remember what I did to celebrate my 40 if you guys remember I did a beltless deadlift with 500 pounds for as many reps as I could and I cranked out seven reps uh, and I was real happy with that I was happy with that but you know what I turned 42 next month and this is stuff that I have to look at with my own training and I see the difference with my training and recovery and particularly like what I've been cutting right now I can absolutely see that it's a different ball game um, even on TRT, guys, it's totally different than when you're in your 20s or even in your 30s training. And you just simply have to accept that. And, and the truth is, um, it's even apparent when you start looking at records and things. So, you know, people can say, well, you know, people can just use a little bit of gear and they can bypass, um, you know, the, the issues you start to run into as far as connective tissue and recovery and adapting to volume as you start to get a little bit older. You can just use some stuff. Well, if that was the case then guys in their 40s in the non-drug tested powerlifting federations would be lifting just as much as the guys in their 20s and 30s. You guys ever looked at the records? You guys seen the records? People say, well, what do you mean? Go look at like the USPA or PL. Uh, you look at the WPC. Go look at their, their American records. Look at their world records and start comparing the open class, the, the age 23 to 39, with the Masters 1 and the Masters 2 and start looking at the actual records. And what you're going to find when you start looking through those records, you might see a, a record might be 650 pounds on a lift in a given weight class, right? You go look, get out of the super heavies, go into those lighter weight classes. You go look and see there's a guy who's 31 who lifted 650 in that class. You go look at the guy in the Masters 1 in his early 40s, the record's 550. You'll look at the Masters 2, age 45 to 49. The record might be 500 pounds. It might be 450. And that we're talking an American record, a world record. There are people competing for those records in the non-drug tested. So guys are allowed to use whatever they want. Um, guess what? That's the reality of it. You know, and people can, can say whatever they want about that. But when you guys reach, you start reaching your late 30s, you reach your 40s, you reach your 50s, and you keep training, you're going to find it's a different ball game. Um, it's a totally different ball game in terms of recovery. And, uh, you know, it's uh, Mark Ripto has talked a lot about this, and I think he's someone who has a lot of experience with this. He has trained and coached hundreds and hundreds of people in these different age demographics. He is himself still lifting in his 60s, and believe I think he claims he can still pull 500 uh, for a single on a best day. Um, and things that he's noticed is that as we get older, we actually handle heavy weight relatively well, uh, which you see by those records. I mean, there are guys out there still deadlifting over 600 pounds in their 40s and, and 50s and things in competitions. They are out there. Uh, believe it or not, we do handle heavy weights relatively well as we age. Uh, what he's noticed is that volume varies us. Too much training volume in a session, too much volume in a week. It absolutely buries you as you get older. You cannot recover from training volume as well uh, as you can intensity. Um, and I think there's a degree of truth to that because I, I definitely notice that difference uh, in terms of, of training volume and even, even high frequency. I mean, when I was doing Bulgarian training, hitting the daily maxes, um, I do notice when I was cutting, it became a problem. The first 10, 15 pounds of body weight loss wasn't a big deal. After about 20 pounds of weight loss, even that became a problem. 
Um, and I noticed the same thing doing squatting for a bunch of fives uh, three times a week. I definitely feel it, particularly cutting as I get older. Uh, so as that volume and frequency goes up, it, it is harder for us to deal with. And it's something that you have to accept. Um, and it's things that we have to work around. It's things that we have to pay attention to. As we get older, we have to pay attention to our joints. We have to pay attention to our connective tissue. We've got to watch our recovery. And we have to know when to take days off. We have to know when to get that extra sleep. Um, and, and I don't care if you're on TRT or you're blasting a little gear or whatever you're doing, you are certainly not the same creature that you once were. And it's not to say that we can't be strong, we can't be jacked. I think I'm a pretty strong guy. Uh, you guys, again, you've seen me shirtless recently. I think I'm a pretty decently big guy for a guy in their 40s who's not blasted a bunch of gear. I think I'm decent, I'm doing decent. I mean, I'm 5'9", 209 pounds, and you can see my abs, even under my fur. So I'm not a tiny dude, uh, and I'm decently strong. I move some respectable weight, but it's a different ballgame. Training is different. Um, and like I said, I don't think it's about, oh, everyone, you can't lift heavy. When you know, it's not that you can't lift heavy. You just can't handle large amounts of training volume. And when you do too much volume, you start to feel it in your tendons, you start to feel it in your hips. You feel these things. We don't recover the same. We have to temper that total training volume differently. We have to get that extra rest. We have to deload at certain times where we've got to pay attention to our bodies if we want to continue to make that progress. If we want to continue to make that progress, because because that's the whole point. Um, I don't believe that we should go quietly into the night. Um, I don't believe that as we age that we have to get weak or frail or, or anything else. Um, but we do have to pay attention a hell of a lot more to our things like our recovery. Um, and, you know, as we start looking at more and more the, the scientific literature and we start looking at injury prevention, you know what, that seems to be largely where most injuries come from heavy lifting. It isn't actually from lifting heavy weight. It doesn't even seem to be from using always bad form. It's usually muscle imbalances and uh, not paying attention to your total training volume. In other words, exceeding, chronically exceeding training volumes and workloads uh, that you say your connective tissue can't recover from. Because our connective tissue recovers slower as we get older. That's a simple reality. Uh, connective tissue it can very much start to become our limitation. And if you don't respect those limits, that's when things snap. And it has nothing to do with, oh, I don't think he uses perfect technique. I mean, that could absolutely matter. Bad form on certain lists. Moving a bar through an incorrect bar path, it can hurt you. I mean, like benching high up on your chest. Uh, you know, internal rotation of the, uh, the shoulder joint when you're benching. Things like that, sure, that's a problem. Uh, but a lot of it has to do with not respecting total training load and letting your connective tissue get too inflamed and continuing to push it because here's here's what that comes down to when your connective tissue gets too inflamed you can still snap it on a 10 rep set nothing to do with always using too much weight it's too much weight for what that tendon can handle right at that very moment which could happen with 70 percent of your max um, so we, we have to pay attention to these things. We really do have to watch our total training volume and training load more. It's a different animal. We can't do the very, very high volume training. We have to stick with slightly more moderate volume, right? We have to start looking at quality of sets, quality of reps. So there's a reason I kind of push in the direction of I'm doing fives and stuff these days. Occasionally I'll go up to eight, but you don't see me doing a lot of real high reps. Why? because we don't handle volume as well as we get older. And I, I've certainly found that to be true. Uh, and I agree with guys like Ripito on that. We don't handle it as well. We handle intensity decently well, but the training volume will get to us. And so therefore it is about is every set I'm doing maximizing my training stimulus versus the amount of actual volume and tonnage that I'm doing. In other words, am, am I moving 20,000 pounds on this exercise every week Versus can I get the same number of quality reps and training stimulus and, and everything else by doing 12,000 pounds every week on it? And, and it could be as simple as looking at it from that perspective. And when we look at it that way, uh, using the more moderate rep range, which I consider fives to be moderate reps. It's not, I don't count that as low reps. Um, it's more moderate. Anything under five starts to, we're getting heavy. We're getting into low reps. Uh, it's a little more moderate, but there, but you are able to get a quality rep on every rep. You, you're potentially 
stimulating muscle growth at least the last four reps of that set every single time. You're getting an adaptation, you're getting a training response. So we, we do need to temper our total training volume. We have to pay attention to it day to day, week to week. We have to assess how we're feeling from it. We have to assess our connective tissue. All these things matter a lot. And there are times when you just have to take days off from certain lifts. Sorry guys, there was a fire truck going by. I had to pause there for a second. Um, but yeah, it, we, we very much have to pay attention to volume. We have to pay attention to recovery more. We have to pay attention to our connective tissue. That's a simple reality of it. You're not going to be able to do the things that we did when we were in our 20s and still recover from it the same. And when you accept that, that will allow you to continue to move forward in progress. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.